And today is tax day. So hence the song. Um, and we are starting week 11. So wrapping up module nine, the review is due today. And then we're actually going to start module 10. Okay. Have you guys come with any questions for me at all? Oh, my windows organized. I know that I always feel like explaining, but there are presenters windows that you know, you guys can't see. So if you're wondering what the heck I'm doing, <laughs> it's all that. Anyways, all right. <clears throat> so in this module, we have 31 goal topics about standard. And we've been looking at rational expressions. <clears throat> and um, last time we simplified, now we're going to be multiplying. And again, these all operate the exact same way as fractions. So just like when you multiply two fractions, you're going to multiply straight across on the top and the bottom. So let me just come up with some random example. Uh, but we want to cancel any like factors first. Okay, so how about uh, how about that? So you could go ahead and multiply straight across and then simplify in the end, but it's actually easier to say, you know, three goes into 12 four times and eight goes into 16 two times and then multiply straight across. So you're left with just a one on the top and an eight on the bottom, right? Much better than multiplying three times eight is 24 and 16 times 12, whatever that turns out to be, <clears throat> and then trying to reduce it. So the basic idea is we wanna cancel any like factors first, right? Just like here, that 12 was three times four, so the threes got canceled. And 16 is eight times two, so the eights got canceled. Okay, so with this one, we wanna factor completely the top and the bottom. So on the top here, you can factor out a two. You can't factor the x plus four. And then you can factor out a three. And you can factor out an eight. So we can cancel the x plus sixes. We can cancel the x plus fours. And then two goes into eight four times. So we're left with just three fourths. Okay. So they show the exact same thing. Factoring and canceling common factors. You guys try 
another one of these. Try that one. Okay, you can factor the eight out on top and the X plus twos cancel. And nine is three times three. So one of those threes cancels. And you still have the eight on top. Okay, are these good? Any checks or <laughs> smiley faces or any reactions at all for me? <laughs> There's one thumbs up anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. So again, this is why it kind of pays to um, <clears throat> be pretty good at factoring. It'll help you do these more quickly. So we still just want to factor everything. These now include quadratics. And so you can factor this one. X minus 3, X minus 1. And factor out the 3. And then cancel what you can. And then you're left with all of this stuff. OK. <clears throat> And one little tip I would share is, you know, if the quadratic is difficult to factor, you know, try to factor everything else first. And so here, having a factor of x minus 3 might help you consider that that might be one of the two factors of the quadratic, you know? <coughs> So that's especially helpful when we get to the ones with leading coefficients that are not one. But go ahead and try this one.
This one's the difference of two perfect squares. Okay, so here we factor the four out. This factors into those two binomials. This one's the difference of two perfect squares. <clears throat> x plus three, x minus three. And then you cancel the common factors. Okay. So a lot of factoring and canceling going on. All right, same here, we can factor a two out. That's also the difference of two perfect squares. So you have 2x plus 3, 2x minus 3. And maybe looking at this 2x plus 3 could help spark, you know, if you didn't see it at first or something. And that's the only thing that's going to cancel. <clears throat> so everything else is part of the answer. And they just go through the same exact thing there. Right, and then we just multiply straight across whatever's left. Okay, so try one of these.
Are you guys able to factor the quadratics? Okay. See, I did this one because I thought it might be easier first. <coughs> and then since I have a 3x, <coughs> you know, there's a good chance it might be a 3x plus 1. All the signs are positive. And we have two times one. So try the two here and the one here, hoping that the three X plus one will cancel. <clears throat> and that does actually work. Because when you look at the outer, you get five X and plus six X gives you the 11 X. See what I'm saying there? <clears throat> So the three X plus one cancels, X plus three cancels. And you're left with all the other stuff. How are these feeling? Okay. Or... Maybe one more. So again, I would try to factor whatever <clears throat> seems easiest to you first and see if that might help you factor anything harder.
Okay. We've got the difference of two perfect squares here. And factoring the rest and canceling. <laughs> well, you got it. Okay. So the next ones involve dividing. And again, just like with fractions, when we divide, you're gonna flip the second one and multiply. And we, know how to multiply. You're gonna factor anything and cancel the like factors. Okay, so you wanna flip the second fraction and multiply. And as long as I have to rewrite the first one, I'm gonna factor that four out. And I'm flipping the second one and multiplying. So the x plus fours cancel. And then here you could factor a two out. <clears throat> and that's it. So you just multiply straight across. So on the top, you have four times two, which is eight. Notice you cannot cancel the eights can't cancel the X's, right? There are two factors on top and really just one factor is you could multiply this whole thing by one of eight X minus five, right? These are two terms here. We cannot cancel terms. <clears throat> So they show the same thing. They flipped the second, multiplied, factored everything, et cetera, multiply. Okay. So you could leave it like that. You could multiply out the eight on the top. It's customary to actually leave it factored. So it's clear that nothing else needs to cancel. So go ahead and try this one. And there's just that one extra step since it's division, you flip the second one and multiply.
Okay. I always think it's kind of cool when so much cancels and you're left with just a number. So who knew that was another way to write three fourths? I know I'm a geek, but it's okay. All right, how about another one?
and another one that gives us just a fraction as the final answer. So questions or these are okay. Just see what the <clears throat> put up another one. So now we're just gonna get the same types of problems. Oh Laura, sorry, I already put that away. <clears throat> But it has to be one with a plus and one with a minus when we have a difference of two perfect so squares. Um, so that's, you know, two X, I think it was four X squared minus nine, right? 2x squared minus 3 squared. So we would write that as 2x plus 3 times 2x minus 3. Because notice when you multiply that out. Oh, OK. OK, then yeah, you got it then. <laughs> OK. Because yeah, when if you foil that out, you know, to check, you do the first and you get 4x squared. The outer, you get minus 6x. The inner, uh, plus 6x. And then the last. So those cancel and you get the 4x squared minus 9, which is what we want. Okay, all right, so go ahead and try this one. We're still dividing, so you need to flip and multiply. And I'll be right back.
I'm actually still here. I thought I was going to be interrupted. <laughs> I'm going to put this up for you to look at, and now I'm going to be gone for a few minutes. <laughs> Okay, I'm back. Uh, oh, right on, Laura, you got it. I've seen my husband off. It takes an army. <laughs> it's like sending a kid off to school. All right. And then just more challenging factoring because the leading coefficient is greater than one. But go ahead and try this too.
So again, it might be easier to factor, you know, this one might help you with this one, et cetera. If you're struggling. Well, let's just see, Laura, let's just see. <laughs> you got it. And just a note, I mean, I know you're just typing here in the, in the chat, but it's good to put parentheses around the whole top because otherwise it kind of, it would mean just the two is divided by the five times X plus one. Just saying, I don't know what future math classes you'll be taking. So <clears throat> it's just a little note there, but well done. Okay. All right, so that was the multiplication and division. Oh, good. So you're probably going to take business calculus and all that. You'll be fine. <laughs> you will. You will. <coughs> all right. So next up, we move to addition and subtraction. And these are fractions, so we have to work on finding LCDs when we're adding fractions. So first, we just have some topics in Alex that ask you to find the least common denominator. And so remember, um, we want to make sure we have each factor the greatest number of times that it uh, occurs. So we need here a factor of 3x, and here we need a factor of 7x plus 2. So really, we need both of them. We need both of them. These might be all the same. So this is kind of like. Um, If you were looking for the LCD, because you wanted to add like a half and a third, or you wanted to subtract them. And so, you know, for the LCD, you need one factor of two and one factor of three, which is six. So yeah, for these, we're going to need both of them again. Let's just see if they have anything different here. We need both of them, the 8x and the x plus 8. 
Okay, so let's see what the next topic is. Oh yeah, those were all relatively prime. <clears throat> okay, so here we can factor out a five on the five X plus 15. And then here we have a 10. So that's five times two. So if you look at just the two numbers, right, the least common denominator is the least common multiple. So you want the 10. And then you also need a factor of X and you also need a factor of X plus three. All right, so we look at the numbers first and then any variables and any linear factors, et cetera, et cetera. So again, the least common denominator is the least common multiple. So looking at these two denominators, you want to factor. And notice we have a common factor of x minus 1. And then 3 and 4 are relatively prime. So the least common multiple of 3 and 4 is 12. And then you just need one factor of the x minus 1. You don't need it twice. Okay. So again, we're just looking at the denominators. We want to factor them, look at the numbers, and then the least common multiple of nine and six is 18. You could you know, list them out, or you could factor them and use the factor method. And you need one factor of X and one factor of X plus two. Okay. So try one of these. So you want to factor this one and you get five times the quantity X plus one. So the LCD is just five times X plus one. So that one was kind of easy. Let me try to find. All right, how about this one? So you're gonna factor everything. The LCM of nine and six is 18. You do need the X and then the X plus two. Okay. 
So now this one is asking you to write an equivalent rational expression. So this is similar to when you had to write an equivalent fraction, right? Maybe you had like two fifths equals, you know, how many twentieths? And so we know to go from five to 20, you have to multiply by four on the bottom. So you have to also multiply by four on the top. And then you get an eight up there. So eight twentieths is equivalent to two fifths. And this is asking, you know, what would be on the top here? So you want to think about what you would multiply on the bottom. And on the bottom, you're going to have to multiply the four y to the six. I wish I had a little more room here, but you would have to multiply that by five to get the 20. And then you would need to multiply by one more factor of y to get the y to the seventh. I just noticed the transcript is not working. I'm sorry about that. So you want to multiply the bottom by 5y and the top by 5y. So when you multiply the top by 5y, you're going to get 25y up here. Okay. You can see the Alex explanation. They're basically saying the same exact thing. We have to write that as an equivalent expression with a different denominator. <clears throat> and so we notice that the 20y to the seventh is the 4y to the sixth times 5y. So if we multiply that bottom by 5y, right, we have to multiply the top by 5y also. Okay. We'll rewrite it so there's a little more room. All right, so. To get the 18, you need to multiply the three by six. And then to get u to the eighth, eighth, you need seven more u's. So you need to multiply the top by the same thing. So then up here, you get 42 u to the seventh. So go ahead and try one of these. So for this one, you just have to multiply the bottom by y to the seventh. So same for the top. And you get minus three times y to the seventh. Okay. All 
All right, so this is a good time for us to take a break and when we come back, we will start adding. So let's come back at 10.15. So with all we've learned, now we can add and subtract rational expressions. Curious how many we've done so far. We've done nine topics. Okay. Okay. All right. So. With this one, we want to add these two fractions. These have like denominators. All right, so just like we do with other fractions with like denominators. If you have one of them and two of them, then you have three of them. Right, so if you have nine of these and seven X plus five of those, then you can just add straight across the top. And then of course you can add together the numbers And look, on the top, we can factor out a seven. So with all fractions, we wanna make sure that our final answer is simplified as much as possible. So here, those X plus twos cancel and voila, we're left with just seven. Okay. okay. So they show the same exact thing and the factoring out the seven and canceling the X plus two. Okay. So go ahead and try this one.
Same denominator, we can just add straight across the top. Factor out a six on the top. And there's a factor of six on the bottom that will also cancel. And that's your final answer. Okay, remember, we cannot cancel terms, only factors. And again, it's the same with just numbers. You know, if you have four plus three over three, you cannot cancel the threes, right? It's seven thirds, which is two and a third, not four. Right? You could also write that as two and one third. not four, so you cannot cancel these. You can only cancel like factors. Here the threes cancel. Four is a factor, three is a factor. Okay. Right, that's 12 thirds or four. Okay. <clears throat> These also have a common denominator. So you can add across the top, but then you also have to factor the bottom because the a plus two is going to cancel with the factor a plus two. Okay, you have the a of them plus two of them, so you have the a plus two of them, then factor the bottom and the a plus twos cancel. So really everything we're doing is just fractions. Um, and now we've mixed in variables. So go ahead and try this one. The A minus four on the top might actually help you with factoring the bottom. Okay, are these good?
Laura's in. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so all of these are really adding or subtracting because you could think of this as adding a negative fraction. But these two do not have the same denominator. So you need to find a common denominator, the least common denominator. And the least common denominator, you need a factor of three, a factor of seven, and a y. It's 21y. So we need to write both of these with 21y on the bottom. So to get 21y on the bottom, with this fraction, I need to multiply by 7. 7 on the bottom, so I have to multiply by 7 on the top. And for this fraction, I need to multiply by 3 on the bottom. Right? We can also see this one is missing the factor of, of 7. We have the 3 factor. We have the y factor. We're missing the 7 factor. Here we have the 7 and the y, but we're missing the 3. So now we can write each fraction as the equivalent fraction with the 21y on the bottom. So now you have the same denominator and you have 20, uh, 35 minus 12 is uh, 23. And that does not simplify any further. Okay. So they kind of do them off to the side. I like writing them in a line better. All right, so the LCD Um, maybe I should just do for the six, really. When you're looking at the numbers, right, that's two times three. And eight is two times two <clears throat> times two. So this is really two cubed. So you need to take each factor the greatest number of times. So I'm going to need all three of those. And I need the three. And then, of course, there's one x. So that's 8 times 3x or 24x. So see, six is two times three. <clears throat> so we have one of the twos and we have the three and we already have the X. 
But what we're really missing is the other two factors of two or four, right? Four times six gives us the 24. And with eight, we have all three factors of two, but we're missing the three. And we already have the X. So now you have 20, 24 X's minus 21, 24 X's. So that's minus one of them. Okay. So go ahead and try one of these. And here, seven and two are relatively prime, so you need to multiply them together. So the least common denominator is the 14D. <clears throat> Write each one as its equivalent fraction. And then you can subtract across the top. Yep, you got it, Laura. I can just see if there's... Uh... These are all pretty much the same. Okay. All right, so same idea. You know, I think in terms of we want to create the same least common denominator. So it's like we want to build up to the smallest thing. <clears throat> that each one will divide into. You know, I'm literally already thinking in terms of when I look at the two numbers, you know, eight is a multiple of four. <clears throat> So I know I need the eight. And then I need two U's, right? I can't have just one U or this one will never work. So I need two U's 
and I need three y's. If I want to use the same denominator, right, I have to use the highest number of each factor. <clears throat> In fact, four is two squared and eight is two cubed. So I took the higher one, the cubed. <clears throat> and so for this first fraction, I already have the eight, I already have the u squared, I just need two more factors of y. So I'm gonna need those on the top and the bottom. And for the second one, to get eight, I have to multiply by two. I need another factor of u. And I already have all three of the y's. <clears throat> so now I have minus five y squared plus five, uh, not five, six, three times two, six u all over that LCD. Okay. And nothing can factor out, nothing can be canceled. Alrighty, so try one of these guys. Maybe one more of these.
All right. So let's move on to more adding. <clears throat> so these now don't have common factors in the denominator. So again, we just need to find the LCD And for this one, we need one factor of x and one factor of x plus 2. And then we need to rewrite each of these fractions as equivalent fractions with that same denominator. So to get the same denominator for this fraction, it's missing the factor X. And for this fraction, the denominator is missing the X plus two. So now we can go ahead and rewrite these. So x times x plus 3 is x squared plus 3x. Times x times x plus 2. And then minus, when we multiply the top here, you know, keep in mind, you're, you have to multiply the whole top times the whole top. <clears throat> so you have to FOIL that. And you get x squared plus 2x minus 4x minus 8. Okay, are you guys with me so far? <laughs> now we can write this as one fraction. Keep in mind, you're subtracting this whole top up here. So you have x squared plus 3x, and then it's minus that whole thing. So you can distribute the minus sign. I'll write it first. Distribute the minus sign. Okay, so the x squareds cancel. And you're left on the top with 5x plus 8. Oops. Okie dokie. So we're still using all the same principles. You know, it's just that the LCD starts making things perhaps a little more complicated, but it's the same exact principle. They go through the same thing. Yep. 
Okay. So try one of these. Okay. Any questions on these comments, smiley faces? Hopefully no sad faces. Okay. Okay. With linear denominators, So still, it's so all the same principle, right? Notice this is three times X minus five. This one is two. I said two times X minus five. 
So the LCD, we need a factor of two, a factor of three, and a factor of X minus five. So for the first one, We've got the three and the X minus five, but we're missing the factor of two. In fact, sometimes I even just leave these factored because I think it's usually easier. I don't know why I didn't do it this time. <clears throat> And here, this one is the two times X minus five. So we're missing the factor of three. And then we just carry on. So we have eight X. Over It's six times X minus five, right? Because again, this is three times X minus five and then times two. And so this one is two times X minus five times three. And then we can subtract the top. Have to remember to subtract both terms. So we get 5x plus 9 over 6 times x minus 5. OK, so really, it's the same exact thing. <laughs> we just find the least common denominator and add or subtract as, as we're asked. So they did actually multiply that out. They did 6x minus 30. You know, in the end, it is customary to leave things factored. So personally, I would leave things factored. And I would factor these as well. I don't know why I just started writing the way it was. Okay. So try one of these. just kind of quietly do it up here too.
Okay. Oh, did I mess something up? <laughs> oh, I did. <clears throat> yeah. I don't know why. It's good for me to check these too. <laughs> I certainly make my own share of mistakes. And it's usually something really stupid like that. In fact, oftentimes it's just adding or subtracting something really simple. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so why don't we stop here? And I'll see you guys Wednesday. <laughs> Thanks for coming, you guys. Really, 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 prism glasses. Hmm. You're welcome. Interesting, I'm gonna look that up.